Boy, I'm worn out after reading all that. Harsh words. Words of love, though. And before I get into my uh, homily about why this is really a statement of love, I have some, some Valentine's jokes to tell you. Now, at the other masses, I had them go like this or go like that. Some of them got this. Most of them got that. So we'll see what you think. Here's the first one. What flower is given most on Valentine's Day? No, not the rose. Tulips. You get it, Father? I do. He, you know, <laughs> a, a priest once told me, he says, oh, I do a lot of kissing. I just kiss altars and books. <laughs> okay, here's, how about this? Um... If you go to kiss your honey, and her nose is kind of runny, don't think it's funny, because it's not. <laughs> am, I, am I allowed to say those kind? And finally, this one. It's been a mild winter, but my cousin in Minnesota called and told me that it's 15 degrees up there. She said the temperature is dropping below zero, the north wind is increasing. Her husband does nothing but stand looking through the window. And she says if it gets much worse, she might have to let him in. <laughs> Only that would happen to me. Our gospel today is certainly strong, strong message coming from Jesus and it begs the question of what are we to take literally and what are we to take as a metaphor? Um, because I think really what this message is about, it's about the freedom of love. You know, what are we to make of these bold statements? You know, literally, are we going to cut off our right arms every time we sin? Because I can tell you this, if we did... There wouldn't be enough prosthesis specialists to keep up with the demand. <laughs> you know, Jesus is using strong metaphor here because he wants to shock us. He wants to shock us into something very important, that it's better to lose a member of your body than to lose your heart, right? You know, certainly you say, well, I couldn't do it without an eye or I couldn't do it without a hand but you certainly wouldn't survive without your heart. Jesus is calling us to a, a, a deeper way of looking at the law. He's saying that he, he came not to abolish it, but to fulfill it, to fulfill it. And how does he do that? He does that with these radical examples of love. And I thought it was interesting. I was, um, came across a little comment from Robert Barron, who's a bishop, and he writes a lot of wonderful theological books. He's very popular right now. But this is what he said. He says, you know, um, to be like God, we obviously have to eliminate cruel and hateful action, but we have to go deeper. We have to eliminate the cruel and hateful thoughts and attitudes as well, for God is love through and through. He is the ultimate expression of love. He is love itself. You know, John in his letter to uh, his epistle was trying to logically deduce who God is. And finally he just says, you know what? God is love. That's all I can say. How do you express that? You know, there's a lot of ways to express love. A kiss, uh, we talk about a kiss or my wedding band. Those are just expressions, but they're not love. It's really kind of hard to say what love is, but it almost takes like the, a sixth sense, intuition, that comes from the Holy Spirit. And so our Lord uses these very graphic examples. But I think that to go deeper, you say to yourself, well, how do I do that? You know, how do we do that? Um, well, I think it starts off by just being kind to one another and this preferential treatment for the marginalized that is throughout the Gospels. We cannot ignore that. 
to give of ourselves, to give of our possessions, because they're infinitely more important than stuff, right? Sure they are. You and we all know that. And that starts not only in our families, but right here in our parish community. We're here because we as individuals come together in communion, right? We come in communion. We need to have that intimate communion with each other as we worship our Lord and we listen to scriptures and we feed on the Eucharist. Recently, um, I went back and I read Pope Francis' very first uh, apostolic exhortation. If you ever get a chance, it's called the joy of the gospel. And he really sets the tone for his uh, pontificate in this little tiny book, but I've read it two or three times. I love it. And what he says in there, he starts off by saying that the Eucharist, although it's the fullness of the sacramental life, it's not a prize for the perfect. It's not a prize for the perfect, but a powerful medicine and nourishment for the weak. So I think that by welcome to our imperfect world, right, of Catholics, we are not perfect but we are loved and forgiven. We are one in Christ. And we're called upon to uh, take upon ourselves the very identity of Jesus. And how do we do that? By being selfless givers, selfless givers. And we're called to rejoice in his presence, not only in our families and in our parish, with all his imperfections, in me, in my mediocre jokes in the pastor in you right and the pope goes on to say it's unacceptable if people are leaving your church because we aren't good enough speakers or the music isn't good enough and if people are being marginalized kept out this is an inclusive pope he has some very strong words in that encyclica, but I almost have to laugh because the word he uses for people who abandon their churches because we're inclusive, you know what he calls them? Sour pusses. <laughs> that's a direct quote, sour pusses. I thought, ooh, that's a good one. Go after him, Pope. But, you know, maybe that's his just way of saying, you sour puss, right? Um, so Christianity is certainly extremely demanding. Uh, we're really called upon to give 100%, especially when it comes to the marginalized. It's really, really hard. Um, and sometimes it takes something beyond ourselves, right? It takes the Holy Spirit. It takes being fed in the Eucharist. It's a tall order. But I think that's why we come Sunday after Sunday. We're here, we're here to ask God to give us the grace to give us the grace to be his followers. And one other thing he says here too, and uh, he gets a more, little more theological than using um, the language uh, of uh, the streets, because I love that too. He says at one point, he says, he says to the bishops and the priests, you need to go out into the streets and get the smell of the sheep on you. Wow, that's not a put down on us, the sheep, but he's just saying, get out there and rub shoulders with these folks. But he also talks about the marginalized. And here, he's, uh, it's pastoral and it's theological, especially to um, the LGBTQ community, people of color, people who just are different than what we're used to Sunday after Sunday. This is what he says. God loves and cares for all his children, all of them. The church is a mother. Wow, there's the feminine side, right? The church is a mother and calls together all her children. A church that is selective about its membership resembles a sect more than what the gospel commands. We're not about being a sect. We're not even a denomination. Did you know that? The Catholic church is universal. It's inclusive. And it is a tall order, and we all need help with that. We do. Um, St. Paul, in that second reading that was so beautifully read by our lector, eye has not seen or ear has not heard 
what God has in store for those who he loves and for those who love him. Again, the gospel seems very harsh, but it's really about freedom and loving. And when we think about love, of course, you know, at Valentine's Day coming, we get all warm and fuzzy, and we rightly, we should, you know. But for St. Paul, love is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. It's action. It's a verb. And he goes on in his Corinthian letter to say, uh, he gives action steps. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated or rude. Love does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered, nor does it brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. That's a list of actions. Treating other people with kindness and respect, forgiving hurts, rejoicing in diversity. That's how Paul defines love. He really does not care how we feel about it. What he cares about is that we do it. We do them. It's a vocation, a ministry, a responsibility, a way of giving witness to our faith in God. Paul knows that actions of love are powerful and it draws people together. May we as a parish always draw closer to that acceptance of love. And may we love and care for everybody who comes through those doors.